Ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much for being here today. Uh, my name is Juno Kunti, as uh, our generous host told you, and um, I am a former student here at Humber College. Um, I want to thank um, some of the speakers that I had a chance to listen to before me. I think they were wonderful and very inspiring to me. And also the team that were able to put this uh, event together. I think it's a wonderful event and a wonderful team, and they give me uh, a chance to share my story with you. Um, some of you may remember uh, that back in 2009, uh, February 2009, four students uh, from Humber College uh, put together a project, and it was to contact the International uh, Space Station. Um, I am proud to tell you that I was part of that group, and uh, today I'm here to share a little bit about um, what we went through and um, where we are right now. Um, over the past two years, we've had a lot of time and different occasions uh, to talk about how we did it on a technical level. And very little has been put up on why we did it and what were some of the inspirations that made us actually come up with the idea and some of the encouragements that we got. And so, having said that, I think that uh, the biggest message that I want to give to you, all of you today is never let go of your dreams. And the reason why I'll say that is hopefully within the next 12 minutes, I'll uh, make you understand what we had to go through um, in order to achieve our goals, our dreams, and, um, and, and, and see our actual uh, project to fruition. And so uh, when we got to Humber College, our program, the Wireless and Telecommunications Program, we didn't know much about space communications, let alone, you know, about uh, orbiting satellites and whatnot. Uh, and quite frankly, our program doesn't, is not designed to actually uh, take that into account or actually offer anything on that subject. But we knew that we were inspired. And I know that this particular image, some of you environmentalists are going to hate me for putting this up there, but it is a very powerful image indeed and one that has inspired us, um, along with Mark Garneau, our very first Canadian astronaut. And so after we came up with the initial idea of actually putting this, uh, this uh, project together, we had to begin with uh, a sort of like a research project more than anything. And the idea was, for some of you that may not know uh, what we had to do, is basically in a nutshell, was to put together a complete radio communication system, one that was capable of both tracking the International Space Station as it came across the sky um, from Humber College, and also, at the same time, transmit and receive voice communication from uh, the International Space Station. And so, what are some of the problems that we had to go through in order to actually put this thing together. Of course, there were the technical problems um, that we encountered, and I'll give you some specific examples in a second, uh, but there were other problems involved. There were problems, administrative problems. There were uh, logistical problems. And I'll give you an understanding of how and why these problems came up, and we had absolutely no idea we did not actually anticipate any of these problems. So if I begin with the administrative problems, one of the biggest problem, and the very first problem, quite frankly, is getting permission from Humber's administration to let us actually put this particular equipment on school premises. And so we had to go through a bunch of different presentations, and we had to go through a couple of different uh, uh, steps, and we had to present this to deans and associate deans and other administrative people that not necessarily everybody was on board. But quite frankly, we had to come up with our own solutions to some of the problems they posed us. And so after we were successful at doing that, we proceeded with our first step. Uh, another problem that we came across, the very first time we tried to test our equipment on Humber's roof, we almost got arrested by Humber's security. It, it was apparent that they were not in the loop that we actually had permission to actually be on top of that roof. 
And so here we are testing this antenna, and we're surrounded by three of the finest Humber security guards, all with their arms crossed and looking at us. And so we had to explain to them a little bit of what was going on. And sure enough, we had to overcome that problem. And um, the logistical problems that came across. Well, we needed parts, quite frankly, and we didn't have no money. And so we had to actually change from a technical-minded project to more like a fundraising and project management. And one of the things that we actually uh, were able to do is divide all the different aspects of the project depending on the characteristics and the, uh, the characteristics of, each, of, of uh, each member of the team. And so, for instance, my strengths were, for example, in delegating stuff, then I would delegate. And the strength of somebody else were to uh, do some PR stuff, then he would do the PR stuff. And that was quite interesting because it's actually part of the talk, which is the communication. And so we spent a lot of time communicating among us and to the rest of the team how we're going to achieve these particular problems. So six months after all this, we come up with our first design and we send it off to NASA. They determined that there was a gentleman that uh, was going to be some sort of uh, intermediary between us and them. And so back and forth, they actually accept the plan. And this is what we come up with. And it basically what it is, in a nutshell, is two complete separate systems. One is a primary uh, system and one is a backup system. And the whole concept is, is that if one fails, then the other one will take over. Once again, with all these problems, we are determined to actually come up with something that looks something that we present to them. And so while we imagine the Humber mission control to look something like this, it, even though it didn't, obviously, we were kind of able to be efficient with whatever money we raised and decide where the money is supposed to be spent wisely. In the end, we came up with this rudimentary antenna, which was very similar to what we actually designed it to be. And finally, on February 3rd of 2009, Sandra Magnus from the International Space Station actually received our hail. And so the timeline that we spent was about several months, including researching and planning and uh, some of the off time that we had in the summer, it was about 18 months. One of the hardest lessons that we learned throughout this particular uh, saga was there's going to be sometimes things that get in the way that you're not aware of. And so there's going to be some people that are going to be in the way of you and they're going to try or at least kind of put doubt on what you're doing. So what I'm trying to tell you is don't ever let that go. Keep um, yourself in the one focused on the dream. Keep yourself focused on what you uh, determined to do. And the success that we did have after this particular event came from different sources. We we're actually invited to different schools to talk about our project, both on a technical level. Uh, we were invited to Ottawa. Actually, the former leader of the opposition <laughs> came here to Humber College to actually uh, honor us in what we did. And, uh, but the biggest thrill for us wasn't that. The biggest thrill for us was to let younger Canadians, the next generation of uh, technicians and technologists and engineers, to kind of be inspired with what we did. And so we volunteered our time uh, and dedication to other schools, smaller schools, uh, kindergarten and high school, to kind of give our equipment and our time a dedication for them to experience what we experienced, the talking to an astronaut live on that particular moment. And so, as the last message that I want to give you here today is this. When we put together our team, um, yes, there was bitter fighting. Yes, there was doubts. But we kept, we kept our goals and uh, we kept our goals and our dreams focused. And we were determined to overcome any of the problems and obstacles that we um, came upon. And so one of, the final, um, one of the final messages that I can give you is that even though our design never actually 
resembled what we actually um, gave NASA, and don't tell NASA that. What we were able to do is achieve the final uh, goal, which was to make this system work. And so to give you an understanding of what we went through, and you probably heard of it on the news, what I learned from this particular project is sometimes it's the journey and not the destination that matters. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. Thank <laughs> you.